My name is Shane Domer. I'm the strength and conditioning coach with U.S. Speed Skating. And I'm Morgan Isakowski, short track speed skater. And we're going to illustrate a couple exercises to give you a few things to do in case you're suffering from what the article termed lower cross syndrome. If you need more information, please refer to the article and it'll give you a few uh, descriptors as to what this entails. Okay, first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to inhibit or deactivate the overactive musculature uh, that contributes to lower cross syndrome. And the first one that we're going to work on is going to be the hip flexor area. Typically in lower cross syndrome you have a very tight overactive hip flexor, weak glutes. So the first thing we're going to do is try to get this thing to calm down a little bit. So Morgan's going to lie on a foam roller and this can be anything that you see in your typical store um, as far as a foam roller goes. She's going to tense up her glute so she lengthens out her hip and then she's going to roll back and forth from about here to here trying to find the spot that's most painful and when she finds that spot she's going to sit there and she's going to hold it for about 20 seconds. Okay, now that we've actually inhibited or deactivated the hip flexor with a rolling technique, we're now going to try to lengthen it out a little bit to uh, take away some of that tightness involved in the hip flexor. So Morgan's going to get into a stretch, which she's going to be in a half kneeling position. And in this position, she's going to lean forward with her knee going forward, tensing her glute so that she opens up the hip until she finds a good stretch. Then this, the second step to this actual stretch is she's going to reach over her head and back, really lengthen out the psoas along with uh, the rectus femoris, which is actually going to be you know, the hip flexor complex. She's going to hold this for about 20 to 30 seconds and then switch legs. Okay, now that we've inhibited and lengthened the hip flexor complex, we're going to go to the back side and we're going to try to wake up the glutes, which typically have been dormant if you have very tight hip flexors and you have lower cross syndrome. So what Morgan's going to do, she's going to lie on her back. She's going to bend her knees, she's going to pick up her toes because all the pressure should be uh, distributed throughout the heels. And she's going to squeeze her glutes together, bringing her hip up into a position here. She wants to maintain a nice neutral spine, so she's going to make sure that she doesn't overextend or hyperextend her low back while she's doing this. She's going to hold this position for a second or two, then she's going to drop back down in a controlled fashion and then repeat that movement for about 12 to 15 repetitions. Okay, finally we're going to tie all this stuff together by using an exercise where the prime mover is going to be the glutes, but the glutes are going to also have to call upon the hamstrings and low back in order to perform the movement the correct way. So we're going to kind of sequence everything back together in a very functional movement um, so that now these are, these are loose, this is working, let's put it all together and really reinforce that. So we're going to do what's called a face the wall kettlebell pickup and we can also do this with a dumbbell if you don't have a kettlebell at home. Okay? So what Morgan's going to do is she's going to get as close as she can to the wall. Now you might find that you can't get all the way up against the wall to start this exercise. But the goal is to get your toes up against the wall, slightly external, or externally rotated feet. You're going to sit down and backwards with the glutes, nice tight shoulders picking up the kettlebell in a controlled fashion, then putting it back down and coming up without the kettlebell. If this is performed correctly, you'll see that the hip moves backwards and it's the prime mover in this exercise while the low back and the hamstrings are merely assisting the glutes with the execution of this. Okay, to sum it all up, uh, we've given you four different exercises. One to inhibit or deactivate the overactive musculature, which typically is the hip flexor with lower cross syndrome. We've lengthened out that muscle with a static stretch uh, with the hip flexor stretch. We've kind of woken up the glutes uh, from their dormant state using an exercise like the glute bridge. And then we've kind of tied it all together with a more integrative and functional movement um, like the face the wall kettlebell pickup. Now these are used in order and can be used every day um, before you use your or go into your training routine to make sure that the optimal musculature is firing 
and that you're not using other things to overcompensate or tightnesses to limit the movement that you do from day to day.